A very warm welcome, everybody. Welcome to Ultimate Pool Extra. Joining me this week, Simon Webb, as always, is Scott Ryan. And Scott, it's been a great first week back following the World Championships this week. Good fun in the pairs and a very good week in the Masters as well. Yeah, we've had we've had a shock. We've had uh, we've had Gareth Potts having to, you know, kind of go through the ringer in order to qualify from a group that kind of on paper looked very simple. We've seen two women's world champions arguably should have been beating Mick Hill and uh, Phil Harrison. All in all, great week of pool and there's still more to come. Yeah, absolutely. There is more to come. We will talk about that. And as much as everybody here would love to listen to you and I, Scott, talk about what's coming up this week and what's happened this week, I'm very, very excited to say that we have a very, very special guest. The man joining us this week was winning major titles back in the 80s. And here he is. He has just won his first world title. Ronan McCarthy, thank you for joining us. It is great to have you on the show and many congratulations on getting your hands on the world title. How does that sound and how does that feel uh, about a week on from when you won it? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I think I'm more shocked than anybody, to be honest. Uh, once you get the 53, you don't really expect any uh, world titles. So, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm over the moon to, to win it. And uh, like I said, something... I never thought was going to happen. You're a, you're a player that always seems to enjoy life, whether you're winning or losing. You like to go around and you make a lot of friends around the world because of Paul. How has the celebrations been since you won? <laughs> they haven't stopped, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I got home uh, I got home on the Friday and the Saturday. We had a big party for my wee girl. She was five. So I came from that party and then I got home. And I drove up the lane, and there was like 50 cars at the top of the lane. To, and it just says to my, my girlfriend, what, what's going on here? What, what, why is all the cars here? And she says, oh, there must be something on with the neighbours. And I walked into the house, and the whole place just let up. The whole family and friends, so it was just complete mad. So I had a great night on Saturday night, and then I went, I went over to Edinburgh with the, 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 my, my woman and uh, the kids and partied over there for a couple of days with, with friends over there. So it just hasn't stopped. I love that. That's really cool. I mean, you, you absolutely deserve to celebrate it as well. I mean, a, a amazing achievement. And as you say, in your 50s now, you, maybe you thought your time had gone. But at what point during the week did, it, did you think this is on? Because at the beginning of the week, you were saying you weren't really feeling your best in terms of the way you were queuing. Your teammates were, were saying the same thing, that you weren't playing your best at the start certainly leading up to the tournament, but all of a sudden you found some form. Yeah, the first match I played in the Masters, I actually nearly wanted to lose it because I was so bad. The minute I arrived down, I had the flu and it just seemed to get worse and worse. And I was I was walking around the table with a hanky all the time, blowing my nose and coughing, and I just felt terrible. And I would have been happy enough if I'd have lost my first match in the Masters. But then I sort of got made my way through that day and I said to myself, well, if I can get through this day, I'll maybe be a wee bit stronger in the morning. And on the on the, the second day of the Masters, I did feel a wee bit better and uh, I beat a few good opponents and I said to myself, well, if I keep playing like this, I've got a chance now. Yeah, more, more, than, a, more than a chance. Um, there was a few people. Uh, maybe predicting that maybe your time had passed. Certainly a, a pundit that I know not too far from away from us right now was saying maybe your, your time had gone. How cool to prove people like Scott Ryan wrong. <laughs> well, in all honesty, I can't really blame him because, like I say, I, I thought my time had gone myself. So uh, for anybody that was saying that, you know, it's completely understandable because the, the way I'd been playing, up, and, up until I won the, the seniors, I had showed no form at all this year, so I mean anybody that would have picked me to, to, to win uh, one title, never mind two, last week, uh, I would have said to myself, you, look, you need your head looked at. <laughs> so I can't, I can't blame Scott for that one. Can, yeah, but Scott, you, you got it wrong. 
Well, I, I did, but but it's one of the few times where I was absolutely delighted to be proved wrong. And you spoke about the mini series. Do you think that that you needed to learn how to win again before you could compete at the World Championships? I think that's a good point uh, because I had lost, I had lost the one in Habit. And I, I think that the one in Habit is probably why. I, I've won so many tournaments in England because I was playing over Northern Ireland for all them years and with no disrespect to the Northern Ireland players, there's some great players, but it's obviously a lot easier to win in Northern Ireland and even the whole of Ireland, you know, I was winning a lot of tournaments in the South of Ireland too. So it was that winning habit, even though once you get onto the plane and go over to England, it's, it's you know, you have to raise your game so much. But it's still the winning mentality was there for me to go across to England, and I think I think like you just said there, I think that winning that uh, the Masters competition in England, it sort of gave me a wee bit more belief and, and that winning habit back again. And I noticed something really different about you because I'm not used to seeing Ronan McCarthy give fist pumps and you know really pumping himself up around the table. So. Where did that come from? <laughs> I, I don't really know. I think I think it sort of got to the stage because I'm more known as a money player and in a money match I would show a bit of emotion, you know, I would, I would fist pump and I, I would, you know, be a wee bit more emotional and I, I felt like, I, I sort of felt like it was, it was more that money match sort of situation because you're, you're in the middle of a room one table and everybody's gathered around it's more i think i think that's where i play my best pool in that situation so i was sort of living it uh, as as a sort of money match situation i think that was it like but it, it was more than just showing your emotion when good things were happening which you were doing but also for the first time i've seen it you're actually showing a little bit of frustration when you've got a shot wrong, you know, you're sort of waggling your cue in frustration at, at times as well. So you were sort of riding both sides of that emotion. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It was just one of those weeks. It just, that was completely different to, to, to any other week. Uh, and everything was different just, but whatever, whatever I was doing, it uh, worked. So I'll maybe just go with it from now on. Ha. Talk us, um, talk us through this moment here. At what point did you think, yeah, I'm going to be world champion? Did you not allow it into your head? The the uh, I knew, I knew, I couldn't fail because I'm obviously holding off the red. The white can't go anywhere, so I, I can't really fail at that point. I, I played a terrible shot, two shots before that, and then I played a really good one to get back in the position. But at this stage, you, you can't, you can't really fail. That's what it's exactly what you want when you're trying to win your first world title at fifty three. Like, yeah, so no, was there any temptation just to let it out at this point, or you just get the eight ball in, then go? No, no, I've seen too many silly things happening in the past, and I just uh, I wanted to make sure that black was in before there was any eight cries. I just I, I can't can't help but smile watching this it, it's not just the fact that obviously the fact you're winning it but it's also how much it means to to your teammates and all your supporters there I mean Declan yeah, Brennan and, and, and all honesty I think they were a big part of me winning it because see the whole week uh, along with them boys every one of them was behind me the whole way and it was just it was a bond in that team like I've never seen before and it, it, it inspires you, it really does. Like I, for a long time I haven't played team pool, but see when you're in the middle of that with that bunch of lads, you, you couldn't you couldn't not really, really get into it like. Yeah, I honestly believe that, I mean, if Declan Brennan was to go on and win the world title, I don't think we'd see tears from him, but he was, tear, he was tearing up watching you win yeah, the world no, title. Well, it tells you how much it means. Yeah, and I seen him with the hands up over the head and and the, the the Masters final, and it was just great. It was great that there was so many. All, all the lads were right behind me. Every, they were playing every shot with me, and they could hear them cheering. And Declan was always behind me, just telling me to stay down in my shot. 
and it all that, that whole thing just just you know it gave me gave me belief in it. It, it just I wanted to do it for them as much as it, I, I did for myself. It was just great to see it. Ronan, Obviously, the week. Yeah, go on, Scott. Ronan, have you finally forgiven Declan for his uh, chicken arm in the six red shootout? Now, is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not sure, man. I, I don't. I don't think I'll ever really forgive him. Like, but but the fact now that that he's he's accepted responsibility, I've eased off him a bit. It was it was the fact that he always blamed it on me. But over the pa past few months, sir, he's just came clean and says, oh, "Okay, you know, I'll, I'll accept responsibility." So, but for that, I'll, I'll ease off him a bit. Like, <laughs> that's very uh, gracious of you, Ronan. I love that. Um, we, we have to, as well as the world title, we're going to have to talk about the Masters as well because it's only the second time anyone has ever won the Masters and the world title in the same year Mick Hill did, back, did it back in 2010. When you won the Masters, if that was all you won, I mean, that's still a, a staggering achievement to go there and win the Masters. So I guess that was a huge part of building that confidence and belief to go on that next step to the World Championships as well. Definitely. I mean, I, I would have been more than happy just to come up one in the Masters. The same, my, my brother and uh, his wife arrived down and it was the first time they'd ever watched me play pool live. And just the two days of the Masters was the two days that they had booked in. So it was just, it was nearly like a bit of fate. But uh, yeah, and, and, winning, and winning the Masters, especially the way I won it, coming from 8-5 behind in, in the final when I just thought everything's going against me here, and and you know it's just not happening. And then from somewhere from from eight five down, I've I've been able to sort of pull the game back around and, and to go on and win it. And you know when you do that, when you come from that far behind to win a, a big tournament like that, you you just you feel a wee bit more invincible. You think, well, if I can do that, I can I can, I can beat anybody here. So I definitely give my. I, if I hadn't have won it, I wouldn't have won the Warriors, like. Uh, it was an unbelievable turnaround. I commentated on the match and everything was going Yannick's way. And it wasn't as though Yannick crumbled. You suddenly found something and took out five frames. And he had one chance in five frames to get a frame on the board, which he missed, a, missed an eight ball. Other than that, it, it was all down to your brilliant play. And I you feel like the miss that he had also was brought on with the fact that you pushed him and you found another gear. It was brilliant to watch. Yeah, well, I actually watched it back. I haven't watched the. Uh, it's the only match I've watched back is, is that final. Uh, I was lying in bed the other night and I couldn't sleep and I just stuck it on. And uh, yeah, the, I actually played really well the last four frames. I think I, I missed one chance at, to give him the, the chance and uh, he missed the ball down the rail. And I think I, I, I jumped I jumped out of my seat when he missed that. And I sort of I, I knew, I sort of said to myself, I'm not. This could be my time now, like. But it's still, it's still obviously the last two frames. I had to take out two good clearances, you know, to win it. So, yeah, I was very, very pleased at at, at one of the Masters. It's yeah, it, I guess it shows right that. Behind. Yeah, I guess it shows that even even if you've had a down year before the World Championship or the Mini Series, you you haven't forgotten about how to sort of smash through that winning line when it comes along. No, I think I think I've always I've, I've always had that sort of killer instinct I feel like you, you know well when I when a win comes my way I, I, I can't take it you know and I, I know there are people that struggle to get over the line but uh, no I've never I've never really had that problem of getting over the line thank God Ronan you always whenever I have a conversation with you about uh, Paul you always say about the Paul gods do you think that the Paul Guards got together and thought, you know what, this is a great career, now is his time? Yeah, well, call it Pool Guards or, or call it a few people looking after me. Yeah, I've, I've got a, I think there was a few people looking down on me the, the whole the whole week there. The, the, yeah, because, I mean, what, sometimes at important stages and important matches, Things just go against you, and and they have done with me for years in that particular World Championships. Just a lot of a lot of bad stuffs happened at important times. You know, flukes against me, or getting off blocks, or just there always seems to be something happening. But this year, 
I definitely seemed that like at any big point in the match, the other my opponent was getting that me them we touches that I had been getting for years, and I was getting the opposite. So uh, I think it was due it, but yeah, I, I think there was definitely somebody up there looking down on me, no doubt. You've um you've said before actually I listened back to your podcast that you did with, with Scott and Dan the Ultimate Able podcast. You said that the the sort of World Championships not winning it wouldn't sort of define you. It's something you'd like to win, but it was is not not the be all and end all. Now that you have won it, you know how much did it really mean, and how much was there a burning desire, or would there have been frustration in not winning it? Well, I, I think I think if I lost in the final or the semi final. Or something I, I, I would probably I, I would have hurt you know I wouldn't have hurt at the time but when I look back on it then I, I probably would have hurt a lot because I would probably understand that this is the last chance I'm gonna get you know so yeah I, I definitely would have hurt if I, if I hadn't won it this year yeah and it, there's something about winning the last ever world rules world championships as well it's nice to sort of sign that off with your name on the trophy as well which um, I think may have played a part in the fact that you were able to win it is the fact that you're you're one of the cleverest players we've ever seen so the ability to sort of understand the right time to do the right thing rather than <laughs> it just be all about gung-ho go for finishes yeah well that, that was another thing that never really sunk in at the time but when I, when I look back on it you know a lot of people see me as just like a slow methodical player so for the for the win the, the world championships at the, the world rules but it was the fact that I won the Masters at, at the more aggressive attacking rules as well. It sort of it cuts out any anybody saying, well, he, he can't pot or he can't finish. You know, so I, I've got an argument to say that, 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 that I can attack and defend. <laughs> yeah. Did you make that decision in the final? Because it, when we had the break, you'd just lost a couple of frames and then Chris had come back at you. And it had been quite a, a tactical match up to that point, but then it looked like you tried to be more aggressive once he got back within a couple of frames of you. <laughs> no, not not really. At the end of the day, I, I just play every single shot as I see it. You know, I, I just like to think that it, if you keep playing the right shots, keep the other fellow under pressure. You, you know, I, I would never think to myself, "Oh, I'm going to get more attacking against somebody, or I'm going to get more defensive." I just I just stick to my my game plan is to just keep playing the right shots and see where it takes me. You know, I would never ever say against anybody, I'm, I'm going to attack more or defend more. Um, obviously, two major titles, the World Masters, the World Championships, incredible achievement. But also, we can't have you on without talking about that inaugural World Team shootout. You've already said how much fun it was to play with your teammates, the Northern Irish team. That was a very, very special day of pool. How much fun was that to be a part of? Uh, it was it was brilliant. Uh, not just for for us as a team. It, it was a, a great showpiece for the game. You know, it was a great spectacle. The amount of people that, that taxed me uh, that really no interest in pool that they just said they enjoyed it so much. You, you know, they, they it brought a lot of emotion to the table. You know, with all the different teams, and it was just it was it was class to be involved in. And then the icing and the cake was us winning it because. Like I say, that, that team we had, there, there was no... And see the wee man at the front there, the, 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 well, the two lads that lifted the, the trophy, they were absolutely brilliant all week. That, that wee man done all our cooking, cleaning, he done absolutely everything for us. The, the night I needed to go to the hospital, he was there to take me to the hospital. He was just brilliant, and, and Sean was the manager, absolutely brilliant all week, the two of them. And then the, the, the boys, there, there's no team deserved anything more than, than to win something. You know, and I actually thought we were definitely going to do the double. We were going to win the, the, the big one too. And I, I was actually shocked that we didn't win it. Just the way the whole week was going, the team morale, the, the bond we all had, it just, everything was pointing for, for us to win that. So it did hurt, uh, it hurt bad when, when we lost it. Yeah, Does that make you want to go... Does that make you Go on, want to go back to Morocco and win that big one, the big team championships with that group of guys? Yeah, de definitely. De definitely. Uh, I mean, we all talked about it after after we had finished the, the week. We all discussed it. And I, I think 
more or less everyone says yes, well, we're we're going to go and try and try and win it in Morocco because it's not it's not very often you get a strong team like that, you know, coming from Northern Ireland. We've had a lot of we've always had good teams, but I think that's probably the best one I've played on. And like there's the like of myself and Dylan who are like, pensioners now, so. If we don't want it, probably in the next couple of years, you know, we're going to be losing a few players. But having said that, there's a lot of good players to come through. But I think this group we've got at the minute is probably our best chance ever, especially with the, the team morale and, and the bond they've got between us. Yeah, the other thing you'd say is the one thing, um, you certainly had that English team that has dominated for a long time scared because they were a different team in that final than they've been seen before. They, they suddenly realised that, I think maybe partly because of what happened in the shootout, but they were the way they were trying to get behind each other, the amount of support they were giving each other. You could almost sense that they they knew that was big, and it almost feels like there could be a nice rivalry building for Morocco. Yeah, no, no, they definitely knew that. Uh, on paper, there's probably nothing in the two teams, you know. But I, I just thought we are team morale and, and the way everything was going the whole week. I thought you know we, we'd maybe have too much for them, but. And all honesty, fair play to England in the final. That they were absolutely brilliant, and we we missed a few chances. There was a couple of frames that that went their way that we should have had, but every time they needed a big shot or a big clearance, that they got it, and and they totally deserved it to win the match. You know, the great bunch of players too. And like you say, that they were, they knew they had a match, and they were right all behind each other for that final. That that they knew that if they didn't play to their potential, they were going to lose it. Like. Yeah, you could uh, you could definitely tell that. You, you mentioned a minute ago as well. I just want to pick up on a point. You mentioned the fact you had to go to hospital mid tournament as well. An issue with your your foot. You ended up playing half the tournament in a slipper. Uh, all good now. All, all, all sort of sorted. Yeah, yeah. I'm back uh, back wearing my shoes and all. Now, you know, I, I had bought a new pair of shoes to to play that week, and whatever happened, they were they were too uh, they were just too hard or something. So the the back of them cut my heel. So. It turned septic uh, on the Sunday. It started going all green and fussy and stuff. So I, I went to put my foot in the ground and I just couldn't couldn't even put my foot in the ground. Uh, it was that bad. So uh, the wee man Paul says, yeah, I'm, I'm taking you to the hospital here. So I we went to the hospital and got it all dressed and, and got antibiotics and painkillers and all sorts. So they really done a good job on it. So uh, and the boy advised me just to, to play with no shoe on. So Paul decided, no, he'd go down and get me a pair of slippers, just use one slipper, and I, I work, work grand. You, you tempted to wear just one shoe, one slipper going forward? Because it, it's, I think it works. I <laughs> uh, no, I don't know if I'll get away with it anywhere else. They would maybe throw me out. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> it's certainly uh, a lot of fun. Anyways, glad to hear that you're, you're, uh, you're back to health. Um, yeah, just a, a brilliant achievement. Obviously, we should also mention the fact you made the semi-finals of the pairs as well. There was five tournaments you played in. You've made, what, four finals and the, and the semi-finals and you won three. I mean, going by any other week, I mean, it's the, one of the greatest weeks of all time. It really is. Yeah, well, I, I don't think I don't think that one was too happy at my uh, losing the doubles, but the, the, they all started calling me me, me, me after it because I, I seemed <laughs> to... I won everything for myself, but uh, when it came to winning for somebody else, I couldn't do it. So, yeah, they were, they were calling me, 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 me by the end of the week. But uh, well, I sort of owed what Declan won anyway after that six ball shootout. So, sort of, we're, we're, we're back level again now. And uh, you mentioned Declan. He was the nominated player for the, the six red shootout in the, the shootout tournament. Any thoughts? Because you won the one in the mini series. Did you not think Declan? No, I got this, mate. I got it. <laughs> no, well, in all honesty, that 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 one wasn't even mentioned for the six ball shootout, and then my foot went bad, and uh, I I just said to them, "Look, lads, I I can't do this." But they were obviously going to put me in the, as the nominated player, <laughs> and uh, I I just says, "No, give, give give the lad a chance to reprieve himself. He, he's got a bad bit of history with this, so it's only fair and give him a chance." And to be fair, he, he pulled it out of the bag. I was glad to see that uh, young Louis, young young Louis Singleton, get get picked out with him too, because Louis would be pretty nimble on his feet as well. 
did you um did you know he was going to do that with the looking at the watch did you no, was that ever talk that, that's that's the thing that impressed me the most about that it was brilliant because there was nothing premeditated about it. it was all just spur of the moment just like how anybody w w would do that in that spur of the moment without much pressure and all the rest i just thought this this boy's got a bit of class <laughs> he's got a lot of composure <laughs> oh un yeah. unbelievable like i say just in, in the spur of the moment the heat of the battle to, to even think about something like that i just thought oh th th this is this is classy he, he actually deserves to get like a sponsorship deal off Rolex or some somebody for that because it, it was that good. I, I think he'll take it. Um, it was one of my favourite moments of the whole tournament. He was, he was oh, absolutely magnificent. Yeah. It's so good. Uh, I think he got a lot of grief about it on social media too, which like anybody that can't see the humour in that, you know, they, they need to have a look at themselves. Yeah, quite right as well. But the one thing with that shootout that, that we're talking about is the fact that what's forgotten is the fact that you had to make that clearance against England to take it to a shootout. You had to watch the clock and obviously make the clearance. How tough was that compared to what you're used to playing in, having to make a clearance like that against the clock? It, it's not something you do every day. No, no. It reminded me a wee bit of the one. Uh, I, I think I had one in the doubles against somebody. To maybe to get into the final or the semi-final, it was something very similar, or only like a minute or something to clear up. And I think it was the fact that I'd done it before, I knew, well, I can do this, but still, it was a lot of pressure, even the black, because I left myself hampered a bit, and I'm going, oh, please don't miss, please don't miss. <laughs> it went in, lucky enough, but that was some buzz, especially with that, that, that team, you know, the whole, it was just the, the buzz was brilliant. Uh, it, it gave us, I know you gave you as well, Scott, a buzz watching it. Uh, the, the whole spectacle of the shootout, but the whole tournament was was absolutely fantastic. And uh, I, I'm personally so pleased for you, Ronan, with everything you achieved. Uh, to, your your career deserves a world championships and, and now now you have it, which is, um, I, there was so many people so pleased to see that happen. So congratulations on uh, on finally earning the, the big prize. Uh, I'm really pleased for you. Right then, we need to. Uh, we need to. I guess we should talk about what's happened this week with Ultimate Paul. We could talk to you, Ronan, all day long, but we have had a couple of uh, couple of events happen this week. We've had the pairs, and we've also had the Masters. But let's talk about the pairs first. Uh, and Scott, as you say at the opening of the show, the pairs was it, we expected it to be a Mick Hill and Phil Harrison night. They were the big <laughs> favourites. It didn't go their way. No, they, they they had a dreadful night by their uh, usual high standards. But you can't take um anything away from the the, the team the team that, that that topped the group um they were absolutely sensational um in beating mick uh, and phil emma and amy gave mick they should have you know let's be honest simon they should have beaten mick and uh, phil but for a, a little run of the ball that mick had um at the right time a night to forget uh, <laughs> but a good night for me simon yeah, great night for you because you uh, you had Christy Caulfield and Connor Tracy, who who I, I actually all, I mean, I'm big fans of both of them. I think that more than anything else, they're both very very confident in their own ability and aren't scared to beat anybody. And when you put them together, you know they beat Mick and Phil fair and score. They they took it to them in terms of they just basically said no, we're winning this. They did three off the break. They sort of basically didn't give Mick or Phil a chance, and that was the key match. Always is that that fourth match on the night. Uh, and that sort of meant they could go through without having to do anything from from their final uh, their, their final match, which in, ultimately they lost, but it, it didn't really make any difference. They still went through. So a very entertaining night, Paul. I, I don't know how much you got to see Ronan whilst you're out celebrating, but um, I know that you've played in the tournament. You are still in the tournament with, with Declan Brennan, and you went into your night as favourites. But in that format, it doesn't always play out that way. Yeah, no, I actually did watch a bit of it. I, I seen the, the last hour or so of it and the, it, it's so tough it, it, it doesn't matter if you, you're the two best players in the world there's no guarantee on that night you know if the, you just need a couple of things going your way and, and you're out and, and that's what happened I mean like Christy and, and uh, Connor they played really really well 
and even the girls were, were able to, you know, to stop Mick and uh, Phil getting a, a, a six ball shootout. No, it just goes to show you, it just, it doesn't matter how good you are in that format, anything can happen, anything. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we watch it every single week. And actually, I think this week was a week where all four pairs actually played really, really well. Because I thought Tom Church and Jamie McGauley are also very good value. Yeah. Uh, and that's why the group at the end looks so condensed. I know that, you know, Christy and uh, Connor had already won. But, and that might change how the last match plays out. But I thought all four pairs were great, Scott. Yeah, they were. A terrific, <laughs> a brilliant night's viewing um, from the pairs championships. Probably one of my favourite nights um, of the tournament so far, um, you know, but, but worthy winners and it will be interesting to see how they perform because they that pairing looks like it enjoys the big stage and, you know, they could be very dangerous in this tournament. Yeah, they really, uh, they really could be. Uh, as I said, um, Ronan, you're still in the competition with Declan, just looking at your lineup for the 21st of November in the second stage. You've got Liam White and Jimmy Croxton. Then last year's winners, Sean Chipfield and Carl Sutton, who you obviously have unfinished business with. Uh, and Josh Kane and John McAllister. I mean, that is a night to look forward to. Yeah, but, but having said that, every every second round, every last 16 group is going to be just complete minefield. You, you know, the, in the earlier rounds, you, you will get the odd partnership. You think, well, they can't win it. But... Once it gets to the last 16, every, every single parent ca can win it. So it's just, you're, you're going to get a tough group. It doesn't matter. But it's just, it's on the night. You need the, you need the wee bit of luck here and there at vital times and, and you'll get through. And if you don't get that, you, you, you're going to go home. It's simple as that. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And Scott, you certainly had that little bit of luck on uh, on Monday because if you'd had first pick on the pairs on Monday, you would have gone for Mick and Phil, which is exactly what I did. I went for the favourites, and it cost me because you had uh, you had Christian Connor, and, and congratulations, you get a point on the board, which means in our picking battle, you were four behind, pulls <laughs> you back to just three behind. Uh, so you're edging closer to me. Uh, Congratulations, Scott. But I guess we need to look at next week already. Let's have a look at next week's lineup and uh, see if we can work out uh, who we're going to pick here. Uh, I think it's your pick first, Scott, as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's interesting. We've had a change because it was supposed to be Brian Halcrow and John Sullivan, but John's not playing. Listen, uh, it, it, for me, you can't avoid the fact that Carl Boys and Jake McCartney are the standout pair in there. Um, and also, Carl is going to be playing in the arena over the course of this weekend, which is going to, which obviously always stands people in good stead. So that's going to be my pick. They are the favourites. You are going to point that out. But what do you want me to do? Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think you can, you know, if you're going to have a pick and who you think might come through this group, I think it's hard to look past, you know, Carl and, and Jake. And, and I quite like the fact that Carl's playing this weekend. I definitely think that that helps. And Jake is is going to be putting the time in uh, this week in the venue as well. So I think they'll go well. It's a shame we don't get to see the Soul Man because last year, him and Brian together were absolutely fantastic. One of my favourite combinations. They were so entertaining to play together. Uh, but I am still going to go for Brian Halcrow, uh, playing with Andrew Russell this time, uh, because he, he, I find him very entertaining. Um, I don't know what Brian's going to turn up. I don't know whether he's going to turn up and play really well, or, or who knows, you haven't seen him for a little while. We do know he's got the fastest ever six red shootout, so maybe that could be a factor. Uh, maybe I'm clutching at straws, I don't know, but um, I'm certainly going to go for uh, Brian Halcrow and Andrew Russell. Uh, Ronan, do you want to sit on the fence, or do you fancy having a little, little uh, dip on who might come through this group? I don't know about Scott's picks because, well, I think Carl will do all right, but I'm not sure about that uh, McCartney boy because <laughs> he's been uh, he's been travelling all around Ireland and Liverpool this past two weeks, and and I wouldn't like to be in that hell of his looking out at the minute. <laughs> so you're basically you're going to go against Carl and uh, and Jake then for that reason. I love that. Good fun. Um, OK, so that's our picks for the Pairs Cup. You can watch it all on Monday. Uh, it is on the Ultimate Ball app, but it's also on a new platform because free sports is no more. It's uh, been changed. To, is it via Play, Scott? I'm completely 
lost on Fire Play. Yeah, on Fire Play. Play. Yeah, Fire Play. Uh, but essentially, it's the same the same platform that you've seen before. So uh, nothing really changes from our perspective. It will still be all on the, on there. You can watch it from six thirty and on the Oscar Paul app as well. So uh, no excuses for not watching. And we're getting very close to the end of the competition. I think there's two more weeks of group stages. Then we are into the second round. So it is boiling up nicely. Uh, right, let's move on to the Masters that happened this week. And Gareth Potts came through the group. He was always the big favourites to come through this group. Uh, on paper, we thought he'd come through really comfortably, but he certainly was pushed uh, in both his matches. He won 8-5 over Elliot Glover uh, and 8-5 uh, over uh, Jordan Bradley as well. And he said in particular, Jordan played incredibly well against him. Uh, a very inter entertaining night's ball, Scott, uh, and a really good workout for Gareth Potts, but showed his class in the end. Yeah, Jordan Jordan Bradley was four two up. He, he played some really good stuff, and and he's a he's a player I'd not seen much of. I certainly uh, didn't see foresee him being four two up. But Gareth's got that class running through his veins, where he just seems to find a way. And you know, once he's once he's behind, once he's uh, on top of you, very difficult to very difficult to beat. Not as comfortable as Gareth would have wanted, but. Again, this is why he's an absolute class act and he looks in fine form going into the weekend. But a really an, another entertaining uh, Wednesday night, uh, Paul. Ronan, we talk about um, it in the Monday nights when we have these short races and it's in group format that you go in there as a favourite and it doesn't mean as much because it's such a volatile format. Does that change once you start reaching kind of races to wait? Does that give you a little bit more time to just stamp your authority on it? Yeah, that definitely. Uh, that the, the short races, the first to fours and first to threes, it really is just a toss up. Whereas once it gets to eights and stuff, you think, well, he he's maybe going to make a few more mistakes than me, you know, and it, it should balance itself out a wee bit more over the rest of eight. But for first to fours and first to threes, it's just a complete ladder. Yeah, and it, it, I guess the reason I'd make that point is that Gareth was 4-2 down in his first match, but really did had to, I mean, he was 4-2 down and he was good value for 4-2, you know, because Jordan played really, really well. But Gareth responded in the way that we know Gareth responds. His class was, was shown to get him through 8-5, uh, 8-5. Eight, five, eight, five. He kind of, he, he never worried. He just got, got about his business and, and did what Gareth does. And Ronan, you, you know just as well as anyone how good Gareth is. And he's a, he's a tough, um, tough guy to put away, even when you get ahead of him. Yeah, I, I spoke to him earlier on today, and we were talking about his matches last night, and he says, uh, he basically said, that, look, I, I thought I had a decent draw, and, and you know, I've never heard of my opponent, so I, I should be okay. But he says it was it was as tough as he could have asked for, especially the first match, the, the lad he was playing had four dishes in his first four breaks or something, so he says he knew then that he was under it, and... and he was happy, you know, that he was able to respond because he just, I think it was the fact that he wasn't expecting it. And the lad came over to him before uh, before they started playing and, and says, oh, it's just a pleasure to play on the same table as you and stuff. So when somebody says that to you, you think, well, this is going to be handy enough that the fellow will be in awe. But he says he, the, the lad just came out and played brilliant. And he doesn't know where he's been all, all these years. You know, he's never heard of him, but it'll certainly be a tough opponent for uh somebody next year of the Amber's that challenged her. Yeah, it's one thing uh, being able to play to that level when you're playing your mates down the pub, but playing against one of the best all time on that stage showed some real class there and certainly a name for us to, to look out for uh, going for Jordan Bradley in that first round match. Uh, Ronan, you're playing in the Masters in a, a few weeks' time. Do you know your draw? Have you looked that far ahead? I know, uh, I know Christie's in it. Yeah, uh, Christie's in it. So you, you've got Aaron Joseph, and then you've got Christy Colfield or Alex Bailey if you were to win your your match. Right, right. No, it's a t it's a tough enough wee group, but look, it's, it's one of those you turn up and just do your best, and uh, hopefully that's enough. But look, we well, we seen Christy last night, and I've played Christy before, and I, I know how good he is. Um, uh, I've seen seen Alex playing; uh, he's a handy player too. Look, it's a tough tough group, but. It's one that I feel if I turn up and, and play well of a chance and, and if, if, if I make mistakes, um, I'll probably be out. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I guess 
Gareth showed last night you can't take anybody for for granted because you never know what's going to come against you. You've got to deal with your your side of things. Um, let's update the scores then, Scott. There's another picking round gone. Uh, you got first pick this week. We both would have gone for Gareth if we got first pick, but congratulations. You get another one back, so you're back within two. Uh, so I was feeling fairly comfortable, but it's just started to tighten up a little bit, and I'm I'm just starting to worry about this little swim in the ocean in December. Um, hopefully, I'm still watching you do it, but we will we will find out. Well, uh, Simon, they have uh, on the ultimate pool shot. They have swimming shorts. I would suggest looking at them now. Okay, <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll keep an eye on it, but I'm still comfortably too ahead, so we're not, I'm not stressing just yet. I'm assuming you've already bought a pair, to be honest with you, but uh, you're so far behind. Um, let's have a look at what's coming up this week so we can have another pick then. Let's have a look at the lineup. Uh, it's another cracking group and uh, somebody that you know well, Ronan, will be uh, the uh, headline act. Declan Brennan will take on Patrick McLaughlin and then you've got Keith Warren versus Daniel Backing. This is all on exclusively live on Ultimate Pool TV on Wednesday at 6.30. Very happy to say though, Scott, I have first pick this week. Uh, I haven't seen much of Patrick or Daniel play. I have seen Keith play, um, but there's there's no way I can pick against Declan here. I've been I've been picking him. I picked him in the World Championships. I'm not going to not pick him in a group of four. Uh, his level has been playing incredibly high all year. I don't see that dropping. Somebody's going to have to really play unbelievably well to beat him, in my opinion. So I'm going to go uh, for Decky on this occasion. Uh, over to you, Scott. Yeah, I'm probably going to go Keith Warren. Um, in that, like you said, I've seen more of Keith than I've seen of the other two chaps. But if I was picking first, I wouldn't back against Declan. You know how much, um, well, we both love his game. He's a terrific player to watch and a great ambassador for the sport. Um, my only hope is he has a chicken wing moment like he did in that six red shootout for Paul Ronan. Um, and then I might, I might get lucky. Oh, dear, you're a bad man, Scott. <laughs> Uh, Ronan, can you see uh, Declan uh, getting through this week? Do you think he's, he's going to get the business done? No, no, <laughs> no. I, I don't. I don't think he's going to come through because I've seen I've seen a few pictures of him on social media. Uh, he was taking part in McCartney's trip round Ireland, and anybody that goes uh, for a few nights out with McCartney, it, it, it's usually about a month before they're they're, they're seeing him again on the head. So. No, I don't think that is any chance in Wednesday night, to be honest. Too soon for him. Well, there you go. See, see, Scott, that's the sort of insight we needed before we make the picks. We needed to know that he hasn't been putting the prep in right, right for it. So uh, I, I guess we'll find out on Wednesday at 6.30. Make sure you tune in for that one. Right, we have some big news because this weekend it is the final stages of the Players' Championship. Uh, and the big news is that happened actually today, the day that we are recording uh, Extra. Uh, Mick Hill has had to pull out of the uh, competition. He was one of the big favourites, of course, as he always is. Uh, he's had to pull out through illness. He's unfortunately uh, uh, got COVID and cannot compete, which means that the player replacing him is Ronan McCarthy. Uh, Ronan, congratulations to get back into the competition, uh, straight back in action. How much are you looking forward to the weekend? Well, in all honesty, I, I, I hadn't been looking forward to it. I was, I would have been happy enough to get a, a, a week's break, but when uh, when I got the phone call today, uh, I just says, "Well, why why not? Why not give it a go? You know, it's a it's a chance playing against the best players in the world and, and all live and ultimate TV." So, yeah, no, I'm I'm thrilled to have a have the chance, but I would have liked another few days off, but get back at it. Yeah, back, back at it. Enjoy this weekend and then maybe then you can get those few days off. Um, Scott, from uh, a lot of people were probably wondering why and how it's happened, but in the COVID era, let's say, these sorts of things have had to be factored in. We've seen this in multiple tournaments, in multiple sports. Unfortunately, you know, there always has to be a sort of a backup plan. And with Mick coming, um, having to pull out, the option then went, I believe, to Mark Allen, who couldn't make it, and therefore it goes down to Ronan, who Mick had played in the semi-finals. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, that's, that, that is, that is the way it, that is the way it went. Um, listen, for, for, for us, it's just brilliant. We've got the, we've got the newest world champion on the planet, 
who's going to make up who's going to make up the lineup i mean you can't really ask for much more than that i mean i mean you know from our perspective you would want to see mick there but if you've not if mick can't make it due to covid you know that's the next best replacement right there in the April world champion in ronald mccarthy well yeah absolutely we lost the world champion who he was world champion when he qualified and we've replaced him with the world champion which is great uh it, it really works um Let's have a look at the full lineup because this is one of the best nights or best weekends of Paul you could ever wish to see. The lineup is incredible. Christoph Lambert, Gareth Potts, Carl Boy, Simon Fitzsimmons, uh, Rona McCarthy, Jack Whelan, <coughs> Chris Melling, and Sean Story. It is going to be played in two groups of four. So you've got Chris Melling, Carl Boy, Simon Fitzsimmons, and Gareth Potts in one group. And then Rona McCarthy, Christoph Lambert, Jack Whelan and Sean Storey in the other group. Top two from each group on Saturday will go through to Sunday's final. And then they'll play in a group stage again. Top two go through to the final, which we played on Sunday evening. Uh, interesting format. We were sort of, we were, it was never confirmed at the start. We always kind of thought it might be a straight knockout. Uh, they've changed their mind. They've gone for this, um, this group format. Scott, what, what can we make of the, the new format? Well, it gives you a lot more pull for your money. Um, for, for for me, I'm going to be honest, as a pool fan, I kind of was look, looking forward to uh, longer straight knockout races. But having said that, again, it gives you an opportunity to to potentially play your way into the, the tournament, as we've seen in, in other weeks in the Players' Championships. But, I mean, just look at the groups. It's, it's awful. I've had sleepless nights trying to think of who's going to win this. And now... Now we've got the world champion, the reigning world champion thrown into the mix, which has totally, totally done me in. Although I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to base my pick um, on the fact that he's probably not picked his queue up since he's won the world championships. And he's, uh, right. and he's probably been picking more pints up than, uh, than, 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 <laughs> than, than, than his queue. So that's going to obviously play a part in my, um, in my decision. But having said that, would could are the Paul gods going to spring another surprise and is Ronan going to cement the greatest month of his life um by picking up the players by picking up the players championships you can't rule it out you absolutely can't and Ronan, i mean in all seriousness have you touched your cue since you won the world championships and how much are you going to be able to before this weekend I literally haven't touched my cue. I'm, I'm going to get it out of the box here in another hour. B BBC are coming around to interview me in an hour. So uh, I have to play a few shots just on, on my table. So that'll be the first time I've had the cue out. But I'll, I'll play a bit tomorrow night and, and then I'll get a knock from the tables on Saturday before I play. So I'm not I'm not the biggest practicer in the world anyway. So I don't, I don't think that will have any effect. As long as I can keep the... The positive thoughts in my head I, I don't really need to practice that much what do you make of the the format the fact you're playing in a group stage so the you're going to be playing the other three guys races to six half an hour matches you need to finish in that top two do you end up getting sort of sucked into sort of table watching and trying to work out what you need to do in your final game were you very good at just sort of playing each match independently no i i think again you're better just play every shot as it comes and every frame and look, uh, if you play your shots right, the the, the scores and, and the format will look after itself if you just keep doing the right things. Yeah, I thought you'd uh, I thought you'd say that. Uh, how, easier said than done, I think, for some players. Certainly would have been for me if I was in that sort of format. I know that. Uh, Scott, we, we should have some picks then. You said it's a minefield. Uh, you're going to get to pick first. Let me first ask you, has this format, has it changed how you're approaching how you pick it? And then let me know what you're picking. Uh, it, it, it has, and obviously the, 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 the change, the change, um, <laughs> the, the change in, uh, Ronin, uh, from Mick is, is obviously another thing that's got to be factored in. I really like, I really like two players. And I think that there's two players who are going to be mega dangerous, um, throughout the weekend, obviously Gareth Potts, mega dangerous, but there's been something about Carl boys as well, which is kind of. You know, his weekend in the Players' Championship was arguably some of the best pool you'll ever see in your life. And this is a guy who says he doesn't practice. Obviously, he's probably lying about the fact he doesn't practice. I'm sure he does. Um, but he played just some incredible pool. 
I can't back against the Golden Boy though. Um, it's his venue. He played. He's played the best pool in the entire tournament. Um, and I think, despite the fact he's in a really difficult group, I can't look past him. Yeah, you can't argue with that pick, really. Um, when I thought it was going to be long, straight races and long races, <laughs> for me, it was going to be a case of, you know, everybody that came through this played great to come through. Maybe Jack Whelan didn't play his best. He just had good moments because he was he was under the weather. Um, but when you look at it, you know, Gareth Potts is... is arguably the greatest of all time. He's certainly in the top two. That there's, there's no doubt in that in my mind. And he played, by his own admission, the best ball he's ever played in coming through this to this stage of this competition. So for me, yeah, I, you can't look past him really, but I have to because you've, you've picked Gareth. Um, but I'm going to tell you, I have changed my mind on when I thought, you know, now that we've got a slightly new format or a different format than we originally thought it was going to be, um, I have changed my mind. I'm going to go. I'm I'm now between two players, uh, and I'm going between two players because I think the six red shootout is going to play a big part uh, in the weekend uh, in groups. Or, you know, two from four. I think somewhere along the line you're going to have to win a shootout to make it through either from Saturday to Sunday or maybe no, to get that, it. In that's, that, that's no reason to pick me, Simon. <laughs> well, uh, Ronan, I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to straight rule you out because you're celebrating too much. So I'm, I'm ruling you out. But otherwise, I would have, would have been tempted with you. Um, but I think that Sean Story, in my opinion, he's got the best record on six red shootouts. I think he's fantastic. I also, even though Chris Melling hasn't been involved in that many, uh, I think he's got the potential to, to put in silly times. So I'm torn between the two. Um, but I am going to go for Sean Story. Uh, I just think he's going to come down to a six red shootout. And I think uh, if, if I had to put my money on anyone with a six red, I'm going to go with Sean's story. So for that reason, I am going for Sean. And also, I'm happy that it's the other side of the draw from you, Scott, as well. So we could end up in a, in a final against each other, which will be fun. Um, Ronan, we can't ask you to have a pick because you're, you're involved in the tournament. So all we can do is wish you the very best of luck. And we look forward to seeing your, uh, your dancing shoes when you do make it into a six red shootout at some point. Thank you. Okay, uh, so that is the Players' Championship. All gets underway at midday on Saturday. We've got uh, the first group that I mentioned there, which is Chris Melling, Carl Boy, Simon Fitzsimmons and Gareth Potts. That gets underway at midday. And then at five o'clock, you have then got Rona McCarthy, you've got Sean Story, you have got Jack Whelan and you've got Christophe Lambert uh, playing in that format. And then they'll come back on Sunday, will the, the four players that make it through will for the final day of the competition. So that is all to what look forward to on the Ultimate Pool at uh, midday this weekend. So make sure you tune in for that one. Uh, we're getting close to the end of the show here, but before we do, I want to let everybody know there is an exhibition coming up or uh, an Ultimate Pool experience, I should say, as it's, uh, it is, as it's called. Chris Melling will be um, putting on an Ultimate Pool experience on November the 16th at 7 o'clock, coming to you from uh, frames uh, in Colston. Scott, you've been to some of these. I've been to some of these. They are they are fantastic fun uh, and should be really enjoyable for anybody that wants to go. We should also mention there are still tickets available for anybody that is in the area and would like to go. Yeah, listen, honestly, these these nights are brilliant. It's not a, it's not like a typical pool exhibition. It's a lot more interactive, and uh, you you get to see the best in the world with a little bit less pressure on them and understand actually how ridiculously good they are when there's a little bit of the pressure off. If you've ever been to an exhibition involving Chris Mellon, you'll know, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll know, but this is totally different from a, con a conventional exhibition, as I pointed out, but they're brilliant nights, great fun, um, and, you know, great to get an opportunity to play against some of these players that you never would get an opportunity to have a game against. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so if you are in the area, then check out the Ultimate Pool social media channels, check out the Ultimate Pool website, uh, and then there is a there's a QR code you can scan to get your uh, tickets ordered that way. So uh, if you are interested, go and check that out and get yourself along because it's well worth it. Uh, Ronan, how much have you been involved throughout your career in, in, in sort of exhibitions and stuff? Have you ever uh, done many of those or would you like to over the coming sort of months and years? Um, I've, done, I've done a few. I've done a few normally along with Another professional, maybe me and Jason Twist would have done a few. Me and me and Daggy Brennan's done a few. I've, I've always had sort of somebody there to sort of play all the trick shots. I was just, I'm there just to drop balls in and 
you know, middle of the ball and, and I let them do all the work. So I need somebody with me as such. Yeah, I, I'd love to see um, I'd love to see you in a in a uh, ultimate ball experience, Ronan. And uh, you know, whoever you're with, I'd like you just to sit there and tell some stories of your sort of uh, your career, some of your money <laughs> matches. That I would pay money to listen to some of those stories. That's for sure. You've got a few, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, plenty of them. Just just can't screw you back, but a plenty of stories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I absolutely love it. That's fantastic. Um, right, let's move on. We have, what else have we got to tell you? Oh, can I talk, talk to you about the Ultimate Pool Shop, which has been launched a few weeks ago now, but we haven't really talked about it here on, on Ultimate Pool Extra. Uh, both Scott and I are wearing um, branded hoodies. Uh, you can't quite see it here, but let's see if I can get up there. There we go, branded hoodies. There's, there's all sorts on there, Scott, isn't there? It's well worth checking out Ultimate Pool Shop, which is ultimatepoolshop.com. Yeah, it's, it's a brilliant site. And this hoodie's come in really handy because it's freezing outside and it's actually really warm. It's a nice, nice, nice uh, hoodie, actually. Yeah, and as you mentioned, there's also swimming shorts, which will come in very handy for your for you later on in, in the year as, as well. Um, the other, the only other thing I'd like to mention as well on this week's show as well is that uh, if you haven't already, then download the Ultimate Pool app. Uh, you may well have been watching everything, uh, watching Ultimate Pool Extra, watching the shows on your laptop, and uh, which is you can do it that way. But there is also an Ultimate Pool app, which you can download. There is a huge amount on there, uh, well worth down downloading and checking out. And, and Scott, I know something that you've, uh, you, you, you're you a big fan of and you've been involved in. Yeah, it's, um, it's brilliant because I get to live cast straight onto my TV through the app, which makes it a lot more interesting. And uh, I can go back. I've enjoyed going back and looking at some and looking at some of the classic um, matches that are on there. And for somebody like yourself, Simon, who struggles holding a cue, there's like master classes and stuff like that on the um, on the app, which you know I'd really suggest you take a look at. Man, it shows you how to like, stun a ball and things. I need something to help me with my temperament because I keep throwing my cue on the floor. Uh, that's the, the one I have to, to get right. Um, Thank you, Scott. Uh, Ronan, uh, that is it for Ultimate Ball Extra this week. Ronan, thank you for coming on. And uh, as we've said before, uh, obviously very, very thrilled for you. Uh, it's the crowning moment on what was already uh, a great career. Uh, I hope the party continues for a long, long time. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at the weekend and seeing you back in action. So thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, lads. It's been a weird one. Weekend. But it's been a weird one for me, Ronan, because I've spoken to you a few times and I told you you were one of my heroes growing up. And I cannot even begin to tell you just how excited I was to finally see you win that World Championships. And for me, as a fan, I felt like I was like a 15-year-old kid again. As a fan, it felt like you fulfilled your destiny because it just didn't feel right. Ronan McCarthy without the words World Champion after. So a massive congratulations, mate. And, and looking forward to seeing you in Daventry. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. See you at the weekend. Take yeah, care. Cheers, Ronan. Cheers, Scott. Thank you. See you all Thank next you. week on Ultimate Ball Extra.